UK small cap investment trusts. Are they worth investing in? And if so, how do you go about it? UK small cap investment trusts can produce amazing returns, as we can see from this table here. All you have to do is wait for poor market conditions to come along when the discounts to net asset value of these investment trusts are above average. Buy them, hold them for three years, and you'll get some great returns. So if we look firstly at the dot com crash, so when that ended around about March 2003, if you'd held on for three years, you would have doubled your money in any of the UK small cap investment trusts. If we look at the end of the global financial crisis, so around about February 2009, again, quite a lot of them, you would have done well with your money. And then if we look at three years after the end of the Brexit vote saga, again, some fairly good double digit compounding returns. So this seems like a sector that's well worthy of further investigation. When researching UK small cap investment trust, first place I'd go to is the Association of Investment Companies website, the address here, uh, select on the sector uh, UK smaller companies, I'm then going to filter on total assets. So I pull up the largest ones first. And the reason why I do this is because I want to look at ones with an established track record, ones that have been able to attract funds into the investment trust, which is all a sign that they're pretty decent. They should also have pretty good liquidity so I can buy them in fairly large quantities at a fairly small gap between the buy and the sell price. So I look at that, I can look at things like the discount or premium to net asset value, I can look at the dividend yield, and I can look at the total returns. So what I'm going to do is just pull the largest ones and then look at them in a lot more detail because some of these smaller ones here, they're really just not worth bothering with. They're so small that they almost should merge and really consider what their future should be. I wouldn't buy a UK small cap open ended investment company when the equivalent investment trust is on a double digit discount to net asset value. Next, I can go to my broker's website and pull up the 10 year price chart and compare it to net asset value. And I've done that here for JP Morgan UK smaller companies investment trust. And what I can see is that in the period around 2016, 2017, there was quite a large discount to net asset value. But at times there's actually been a small premium to net asset value when prices have really raced ahead. And those were clearly good times to sell. In terms of a time to buy, I'm possibly looking at about two pounds because that's been a historic floor for the price of the investment trust. And the current price is about two pounds 40. So maybe if the price falls a bit more, it'll become a bargain and something that I'll be potentially interested in. With BlackRock Throgmorton, there's a much smaller discount between price and net asset value that shows that this investment trust is a bit more popular. It's a bit more highly regarded. And when prices fall, there tend to be more buyers mopping up excess stock. Some of the UK small cap investment trusts have made not just one year lows, but multi year lows, as we can see here for the Aberdeen UK Smaller Companies Growth Trust. It doesn't necessarily mean that they'll bounce back anytime soon and that they're currently a bargain. The price performance of the UK Small Cap Investment Trust has been fairly similar, although here with Aberforth, we can see that the price growth has been fairly abysmal over the last 10 years. The top table here looks at the correlation between UK small cap investment trusts, and they're all pretty highly correlated apart from Aberdeen Smaller Companies Income Trust, though even that one has pretty similar volatility and drawdown duration in months at 26 months to all the other UK small cap investment trusts. Then in terms of performance, five year compound annual growth rate is negative for some, slightly positive for others, although these numbers do exclude dividend income. And I think to me, what this is showing is that it's really the sector that you're in that is dictating your performance 
rather than the stock picking skills of an individual fund manager. So all these UK small cap investment trusts are hampered by just the nature of small caps over the last five years. To research an investment trust in more detail on the AIC website, I'd go to the research tab and see what's been published about an individual investment trust. So here for Aberforth, we've got a Kepler report and I've read that and that gave me a lot of useful insights. Though unfortunately, it didn't really compare Aberforth to other UK small cap investment trusts, which is really what I was after. To get an overview of the portfolio of a UK small cap investment trust, I'd go to the Morningstar website and search on the ticker. So here for Aberforth smaller companies, um, we've got some factor information here. So definitely small cap, um, its value, the price growth hasn't been that great. Quality, not so good. Unfortunately, volatility quite high yield above average and we've got all kinds of stats here so we've got price to earnings looking pretty low price to book pretty decent price to sales again pretty decent so this is looking like quite a good investment trust for value uh, come down here we've got the sector split lots of industrials that's not too bad and then come down here we've got some information on gearing We've got some information on total number of holdings, 78. So yeah, reasonably diversified. And then at the bottom for the top 10, we've got things like PE ratios, whether they're profitable or not, um, any recent changes in the holdings and the weight in the portfolio. So we've got some great Morningstar data that we can use as part of our initial sifting to find the best UK small cap investment trust. It's essential to find out the remit of the investment trust, as this will tell you so much about what it's trying to achieve. And here with Aberforth, the idea is to look for robust businesses that are cash generative, that are trading at cyclically low valuations, and then they want to hold them until the share price recovers, at which point they'll sell and then recycle into newer and better value ideas. So it does sound great, but unfortunately they do have a few duds in the portfolio. There are companies like Dilaroo that are just recovery shares that simply never recover. And then at the opposite end of the factor scale, we've got BlackRock Throckmorton. So here we can see quality is better, momentum slightly better, style is much more growth orientated, higher price to earnings ratio is still not astronomically high, price to book quite high. Um, but we've got some potential earnings growth, although the sales growth looks really dire. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. We can't always 100% trust the Morningstar data, unfortunately. Then we've got a sector split here, um, maybe a bit more than consumer cyclical. Um, then we come down here to the top 10 holdings. So some quite familiar names here, YouGov, um, Gamma, 4imprint, they're quite popular amongst growth investors. Here are some comments from the excellent website QuotedData.com about BlackRock Throgmorton. They say that the focus of the investment trust is on fundamental business strength, low leverage and experience management teams. So it's combining quality and growth to put together a solid small and mid cap portfolio. If you go back in time and look at books like this one, Beyond the Zulu Principle, You'll find small cap companies being discussed, such as Laura Ashley, that's now bankrupt, JJB Sports, that got taken over at not a very attractive price, and Parity, that still exists, but is about 1% of its all-time high. So to me, that explains what goes on with individual small cap companies and how you have to be so careful choosing which ones to invest in, and you're probably better off just sticking with a fund manager and let them do it for you. And also, how many small caps actually make it to becoming large caps? How many of the FTSE 100 are the small caps of like 20 years ago? I think the answer is hardly any. I think UK small caps are a risk on asset. They have higher volatility than a global tracker, but they can at times produce solid gains. One indicator as to when to buy them is the discount to net asset value of UK small cap investment trusts when that is higher than average 
then there's potential to look to buy on a greater value proposition. And I think that investing in a UK small cap fund is a much better way to approach this fickle market as so many individual companies fail. When considering which investment trust to buy, it's difficult to reach a firm conclusion. The Aberdeen smaller company's income only pays dividend yield of around about 4 to 5%, so that's not particularly good compared to things like the risk-free rate of return. For the Aberforth smaller companies, I think that the performance isn't that great, and although it is small cap value and a lot of people bang on about how great small cap value is over a long term time horizon, like 30, 40, 50 years. They fail to understand that if you go too far back in time, you've got things like the gold standard and no internet, and that conditions were completely different. So, possible choices would be things like Throgmorton, which is highly regarded, and maybe also JP Morgan, um, but it's really difficult to conclude that past performance will be replicated in the future. So it's really up to you to dig deeper into each of the individual UK small cap investment trusts to find out which one best suits your objectives. What's your favorite UK small cap investment trust? Let me know in the comments and check out this video.